Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the United Front Football Podcast with me and Mr. Breezy. Uh, well, we, we were kind of, I was going to say I was pulling my hair out wondering what we we're going to talk about, but that's obviously not something I can do. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're gonna, we were going to discuss kind of like the Euros run up and the England squad, but like the world of football has just kind of just lost its heads in, in the last few days. Um, managers leaving uh, obviously the fa cup we've had uh, managers going to different clubs there's I, I said it earlier in the season that i think like this summer's managerial merry-go-round is going to be more entertaining than the transfers and it's started on a strong foot um yeah <laughs> just a little bit <laughs> yeah, just a, yeah just a little bit um but it, it looked like everything was going to kind of be like be actually like calm down and be a bit boring do you know what i mean so it was like how everything it didn't actually look like there was going to be that much movement in the end. Like, the Liverpool job got sorted out, and then, like, you know, Xavi was staying at Barca and stuff. And then, like I say, the last week just happened, and it's just blown up into life, hasn't it? Well, like, it, it all mental. started with Poch, I think. Like, because even at the end of the season, we were going, oh, he's actually turned it around now. Like, they're playing some pretty good football. They've got, a, like, a decent starting point for next season now. So they've sacked him, obviously. <laughs> 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 they've obviously got... That was not enough chaos for, for Bowley and, no. uh, and Clear Lake. Uh, whoever, whoever it's not Bowley calling his shots anymore, is it, actually? It's, uh, whoever it's, sport, like a, yeah, it's like a sporting director crime fighting duo or yeah. something <laughs> Batman and Dickhead um, <laughs> it seems like that they've not officially announced anything but it looks like Enzo Moresca from um, Leicester's going to be going in there um, which is a weird appointment I think um, especially considering some of the names that have become available and are available um, going for sacking the manager that has turned the team around and done a decent job for a guy that's granted got Leicester promoted but it's getting them promoted from the championship. It's like one step from where company was last year, right? Like he was getting yeah. linked with a load of jobs and he ended up staying at Burnley. We'll, we'll get on to him in a little bit, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't forgotten. <laughs> yeah, we haven't forgotten, yeah. Um, but then going for Moresca, I understand like he plays he plays some nice football, like he's got a good team there, like they've obviously got promoted with with no qualms this season. Uh, but it seems like if, if that is who they are going to be bringing in, that seems like a, a massive call. It's I I don't I don't I don't get it like I <laughs> because like if they were sacking like I understand from what I'm, from what I understand the reasons for sacking Poch was I think he wanted certain assurances and certain control over certain things I, I think there was um I read I was reading a story in the Athletic about it and I think what like the first sort of crack started to appear I think he like the the sporting directors I think it's Paul Winston Lee I think is one of the guys names I can't remember the other got the other one. But they were like, they were like, oh, we, you know, getting concerned about the fact they were seeing loads of golf set pieces, and they were like, they wanted to hire a set piece coach. Posh didn't. They ended up hiring a set piece coach. So I think it was stuff like that that sort of started to cause uh, yeah, a little bit of a rift. <laughs> yeah, but... he loves set pieces. <laughs> and um, and I think he wanted some bit more control over transfers. And let's be honest as well, like if you look at who one of his more important players have been this season in um, Conor Gallagher, who's also one of the players who's heavily rumoured to leave in the summer because uh, of FFP reasons so I think there was probably a little bit of uh, disagreement on transfer strategy and who had sort of overall control of transfers but he, so I, I think it was I do kind of believe it was more of a mutual thing than they just outright sacked him but you know it's, it's Chelsea we, we just don't know right but when you see the names that were getting linked with the job initially so that yeah obviously Moresk is now looking like the front runner and he looks like, looks like he's going to get it but you also had like Thomas Frank uh, Kira McKenna uh, I think I might be. I think there's one other there as well. Like as well. Like, it's, it's basically all the same people that were getting, yeah. getting linked with the United job, isn't it? So, yeah, essentially. But like, especially when it was McKenna and Thomas Frank and stuff, and it was just a bit like, I wouldn't call them upgrades on Poch. Like, if you're going to get rid of Poch, like, that's fine. The matter, no matter what anyone's opinion is is of Poch in terms of whether he's like an elite level manager or not, I don't, you know, I don't think he's elite level, but it's certainly good enough to get Chelsea back into like the Champions League, let's say. But then go for yeah. Uh, a guy who is in his second, I want to say. I'm not too sure, but first, like major managerial job, let's say. I think he might have had a job at Palmer previous to that. Yeah. But first major managerial role at Leicester with a squad that, let's face it, most managers should be winning the championship with that Leicester squad um, because they, they still had a lot of Premier League quality there and, like, you know, won the highest wage budgets in the division. And, you know, they he, he still really boggles it up because they, they were, <laughs> it was looking a little bit ropey uh, towards the end and they got they managed to pull a couple of results out of the bag towards the end of the season to, to win the league um, but then also you got him or like Kieran McKenna who's done a fantastic job but 
is he ready for a job of that magnitude? I would argue probably no. There's two years of experience, isn't it? Like, it's... <laughs> yeah, like I said, I, 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 because like I, I have my reservation of it. I was talking to my Discord about this, and like, I know there's people like, oh no, but like, come on, McKenna's a really good coach. Like, no, he is. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to downplay the job he's done. It's, it's an incredible achievement to go back to back League One and then the Championship. Like, it rarely happens. But there's a there's a bit of a difference, man. Like with managing Ipswich, where going into the start of this season, expectations would have been quite low anyway. To then going into Chelsea, where but I don't even know what their expectations are, be the most like fucking reputable brand of like, football team <laughs> on the planet, probably known <laughs> Bowley. So it's it's an odd one. And Thomas Frank, like I like Thomas Frank, but again, is it is it is, is he good enough? What where Chelsea want and Chelsea fans want to be? So with Maresca, it's it's like yeah, he plays nice football. I I had him down to be sacked like by less than 10 games into the season to be honest like we'll talk about Southampton a little bit later but you see it so many times with teams come from the championship they play, play this really nice attractive style of football similar to company in Burnley right and then they come up to the Premier League and they just get torn to shreds and the managers usually won't move away from that style of play and I was like well given where Leicester obviously probably you know didn't plan to be in the championship to begin with they they were they're not going to take. I, I didn't see them taking any risks in terms of going straight back down. So I I, I always looked at Maresca as one of the ones to get, get sacked for like going into next season. He might still be just not by, just not by, <laughs> by a different um, club in blue. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, it's incredibly surprising. Obviously, he's got a, you know arguably a better group of players at the Chelsea than would have done at Leicester, but still, you know, lacking experience and other. It just feels to me that like <laughs> people have just seen what Arsenal and Arteta have done over the last couple of seasons and gone. We we want that. Let's try and do that. Let's just try and get like a, a former Pep coach or assistant manager well, in. It, it is the like, thing because he was, I think, he was the, the the youth team manager, wasn't he, at Man City? Yeah. Went off to Palmer and then came back to be the first team assistant manager, uh, and then he got the Leicester job. Obviously, done a decent job with them, but it, yeah. it feels like all you need to do to get a management job at the minute is <laughs> have worked with Pep. Like, <laughs> be bold. I've worked with Pep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> work for company. He's working for Maresca. You know. Yeah, Arteta's it's, wearing it's, a wig as well. We all know that. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's Lego hair. Um, <laughs> did, did Ten Hag work with Pep as well? Buy him. Uh, yeah. Yep. Oh, he, so was, he was. He was the. He was the second team squad. Uh, second team coach at Bayern. Um, well, there you then go. Then he yeah. went, to, went and started managing grown ups. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. We twigged it. But um, that's, 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 that's the winning formula, apparently. Even though it's only he worked with one manager so far. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 bizarre, and I, I don't know what this means for for Chelsea. It, it strikes me as like let's just get someone in who's not gonna upset the apple cart too much, who's just gonna sort of let us get on with what we want to do in terms of transfer business, and they're just gonna kind of you know they're just gonna kind of pub with it. Which to be fair, like head coach director of football partnerships aren't necessarily a, a new thing. Like West Ham are now adopting it for Lopetegui coming in. You know, he's he's coming in as a head coach rather than a manager, but. This does this just strikes me as like, oh, we'll potch sort of bit back a little bit on the sort of stuff we wanted to do. So let's get Maresca in, who's let's face it, you know, to get a job at this size at this stage of managerial career, I can't see him sort of arguing back or sort of fighting back on anything that's pushed upon him. Yeah, it's going to be a you know, you jump the ESL high, isn't it? And I think, I think one of the yeah. big the big reasons that's, that's come out is all that is, is kind of rumored to be is like you said earlier, um, Conor Gallagher, but also um, Chalba. Uh, I think like he's another player who's looking yeah. looking set for the chopping block because it's all revenue because he's a youth product, and he was arguably Chelsea's best defender, um, especially second half of the season, putting in yeah, some really good performances. Really good. Yeah, like and it's it's just another like, all right, well we can make some money from him because we've <laughs> spunked all our cash and all these kids that are crap, <laughs> so we need to sell <laughs> sell our actual good players to uh, to balance the books a little bit. It's uh, it's, it's it's a worrying. It is. It'd be a worrying time if you're a Chelsea fan. I think F to be making yeah. not just kind of decisions like that, selling some of the most pr productive players they've had this season, in order to be able to keep affording to spend ridiculous money, or at least just cover the bills that they've already got, and then mm. sacking the manager that's finally got people click clicking. It's it, it would be a bit like. It's a very this is fine meme, isn't it? It's like everything's on yeah. fire. <laughs> it's fine. I'm sure everything's fine. It's all going to be fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it, it's, it feels like, because as, as well, like by all accounts, Poch was quite popular as well. Like you saw a lot of the players sort of, I think Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Jackson put posted something on Instagram just being like, why? Yeah. <laughs> why is this happening? Like, it's obviously quite popular amongst the players and stuff. But even like when you look at the, the list of names who were, who were linked, like obviously McKenna was a, 
felt very much like a. But do you look at McKenna Moresco and it just feels like everything you do on Football Manager where you're like, I'll just go look at the championship who's like who's performing the best. We'll yeah. nab them. Who's got the most twenty? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was, I was gonna go and Google, like just Google like trendy football managers and I just come up with a list of like Enzo Moresco and Kieran McKenna. Deserby would have made I actually think Deserby would have made a little bit more sense just because I know he's sort of arguably you can make the argument say he's been found out a little bit this season with Brighton and obviously he's left now. But I think you look at the players that are in that Chelsea squad. I think in terms of playing style, it's not a massive departure from what Potch was doing anyway. It's probably a slightly elevated version of that. But he, he links back up with Saicedo. Like, you've got Enzo there who can sort of do the McCall- McAllister job that he, he was doing at Brighton when Deserby was there. Like, I think there's probably got a lot of similarities from Brighton's squad last year. <laughs> Mostly because most of them joined Chelsea now. But like, <laughs> and um, and the, you know, the current players in the Chelsea squad, I think Deserby would have got a more consistent tune out of them. Um, but again... I can only think that, you know, he disagreed with Brighton's transfer policy and that's why only why he ends up agreeing to leave. So I wonder if that sort of played play a part. They see him as maybe like a little bit too volatile for what they want to do. And like I say, Moresca is just an easy, like a bit of a yes man, I want to say. Like, yeah, well, that's, that's essentially what kind of got Tuchel the bullet. Like that's what's got, got, got Poch the bullet. To go yeah. out and hire a person who's quite publicly just slated the club for their transfer policy <laughs> would be quite the bold move it's like okay well you know you'll be getting your payoff in two years so don't worry about it <laughs> yeah it's in- it's interesting as well though there's a, there's a less i've got a lester van in my in my like he's regular in my twitch streams and stuff and like he he wasn't like he wasn't of, of this way of thinking but like i remember seeing on twitter as well like a few months ago Leicester fans weren't like overly happy with maresca the entire time he was there i know there were complaints about like style of football and stuff like that and a bit stu- again that thing of like stubbornness from sort of in, in terms of not wanting to move away from that style of play that he's implemented like and I do, again I do wonder with that that's you can understand sort of limited patience from a set of fans who support a team who feel like they shouldn't really be in the championship and are expected to go straight back on the first time of asking Chelsea like Chelsea fans and patience isn't something they're used to like I'm not even saying that as a dig that's just the way they've been conditioned over the last 20 years of Ramovich because if it didn't go well, yeah, we'll just sack and sack the manager and get someone else in, then we'll go win a trophy the following season. That's sort of what they've been used to. So to bring someone in who, who's meant to be like this, they're gonna, I think I've sort of they're him like a five year contract. So they're trying this again of like, let's get someone in on a long term contract with the idea of having this big vision. It's like, well, you've tried that already. Yeah. Like, so what's going to happen when you're 13th by November? You're going to get rid of him again, and start over again? Like, yeah, it's, it's just, insanity. It is just it's Potter again, isn't it? <laughs> is that, or at least yeah. it feels like you know a very system based manager likes possession, like, um, like is part of a bigger structure, and it's it all works for the system rather than letting the players shine. Cool. Well, you know, you got rid of him eighteen months ago to get someone in to win. Now he started winning, and you've sacked him anyway. Like, <laughs> it's like, what what do, you, what do you want at this point? It's like, what do, what did Chelsea board want? <laughs> what do you what, 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 what do the Chelsea board want? Yeah, it's it's a re, honestly, it's a really really weird like turn of events. I think, and I think it's it, I don't, there's not many clubs with the ambitions that Chelsea have would have made that managerial switch. I think in terms of taking Poch out for Maresca, and I like I, look, I'm I'm not saying it's, I'm, I'm not saying it's a guarantee that he's going to come in and do a terrible job, but I don't know, man. Like it's just like it's, <laughs> it's a big gamble. Be, would, yeah, it's, it's a, a massive gamble. gamble. And like, who would you rather hedge your bets on, like Maresco or Poch having a better season next year? Like, it's, well, it's kind of like it, it kind of like moves on to another another point. Like, and uh, we'll we'll talk about the uh, you know we'll talk about it now. Man United beating Man City in the FA Cup. Who saw that coming? <laughs> Not <laughs> I me. Did say it would be, I, I did say it wouldn't be out of character for them to win the game. I didn't think they'd win it that convincingly. Like, I thought it would be a bit more. Uh, Shit housing. Yeah, <laughs> it was. And it was. Yeah, it, was very it got. Convincing. It got to like like into the second half. Like I couldn't watch really much of the first half for, for reasons that I, I won't go into. But like, so I caught up on the highlights of the first half at half time. What then started watching the second half, um, and I was surprised at how not. I don't want to say comfortable, but it unstressed United looked. Like it was like mm. there was the odd, odd boy in the box. I thought it sh- that. Uh, that game just showed how much we've missed Varane and Martinez all year because they were exceptional yeah. all game. It's like if we if we have them, it's a completely different season. But that's a, a drum I've been banging all year. Um, but like the just the real lack of energy and inventiveness with Man City until Doku came on, who has got that bit of X factor and like until Pep beats that out of him, he's going to be their most dangerous player because um, he'll have him him dribbling to nowhere and passing it backwards like Jack Grealish in no time. Um, and his career will be ruined. Yeah. So he'll, be, he'll be looking for a transfer in three years. 
like uh, like Grealish is this year. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like the, the the lack of kind of anything other than the last ten minutes of the game, like it just it was un- unerringly easy. It was like oh. Yeah, we're actually we actually look good. I know they have all the ball, but it's Man City. They have all the ball. Like whenever we attacked, we looked dangerous. There was a few breakaways where we could have got a third as well. Like I was just I was watching it going, this shouldn't be. We shouldn't be making this look this easy. Like what's wrong? What's, like, what's going on? Are they still like pissed? Like cause they, were, <laughs> they were all on the lash, weren't they? After winning the title, it's like so may, maybe it's that. But it has kind of thrown up this whole discussion about uh, uh, Eric Ten Hag again. Um, whether. Now, whether he should be staying on, whether he's, he's going to get replaced, like, I know there's a load of kind of reports saying it's already been decided. For me, there's not really any reports I've seen from any credible sources. It's a load of, yeah. like, it's it's a a Guardian writer who isn't Jamie Jackson, so I don't really care. Um, yeah, no, fair. Yeah. And no, so the, Steinberg's usually Chelsea and West Ham news. So I was, I was surprised to see him leave with, like, like, an exclusive on it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, so I was like, oh, that's, that's a bit odd. And I thought it was quite telling that like the two big hitters, right, are Ornstein and Romano, right? So it's like if they if they don't sort of follow suit with it quite quickly, then usually it's not sort yeah. of if, set in stone. If Ornstein isn't tweeting about Man about Man United news, then I don't really believe any of it. And and he's been yeah. he's kind of like kept his distance with it. Laurie Whitwell as well, who's you know from the Athletic, um, is a big big United news guy, and neither of them have been going with it. Now it's it's obvious they've been talking to managers, but I'd like I kind of said when it was being reported, I said maybe they're just seeing what the plans are, and now that. Yeah. McKenna's reported to be signing a new deal at um, Ipswich. Maybe it was a case of, look, are you going to be going to Chelsea or are you stick, sticking around? Because if things go wrong in the next six, 12 months, then we'll, we might be knocking on your door. Are you going to be available? Mm. Um, so it might be a case of that. Um, and whilst one game doesn't change the season, uh, obviously winning the FA Cup is massive. Like, not not loads of teams have done it. Like it's it's still it's still a massive thing. I understand it's not where United want to be. He's finishing eighth and winning the FA Cup, but for a manager that's won two cups in two years, dealt with all the issues he's had to deal with, and look, had a good season last year. Let's not forget. I think it does kind of it makes you realise that the players haven't given up because that was a really good performance from everyone. Uh, everyone was playing for the shirt that day. Um, so maybe a, maybe another season is on the cards. Maybe it might make them kind of go. All right. Well, the players are still playing for him, so there's there's not as as much of a need to get rid of him right now. And and I think that that combined with like we've said the the, the managers that are available on the market, you've got Tuchel, Poch, and Deserbi linked. Are any of them a significant upgrade? It's I don't think so necessarily. You've got hmm. Tuchel who's just finished third with Bayern Munich in the Bundesliga, which is which should get anyone sacked to be honest. Yeah. Um. Pochu's just he's done a like I say a decent job at Chelsea, but I don't think he's done a much better job than United considering the strength of the squad that he had available. And Deserbi, who, like we say, kind of got found out a bit second half of the season. I think they won two of the last ten. Um quite a spiky kind of character, and that's not just his hairstyle. Um <laughs> doesn't look a Bond villain, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> he looks like a he looks like a twelve year old in high school in the nineties. Um <laughs> He just needs the frosty tips now. Um, <laughs> you, and the, and the, the flame <laughs> shirt as well. Yeah, that's exactly it. Is it Guy Fieri? Is that the yeah, Guy Fieri? Yeah. <laughs> um, and the other oh, guy was obviously yeah. Kieran McKenna, who, like like we said, done a fantastic job bringing uh, Ipswich up through two divisions, but is it going to be an upgrade? And I think without an outstanding candidate and a manager that's shown that he can do it and, you know, with, with players available, can get a good performance out of the team, He's won two trophies in two years, Europe twice. Like at this point, I think you do just go, "All right, well, we'll just let him see out his last se- his last season of his contract. If it doesn't work, you've you've not lost anything. Hmm. And if it does work, then you've only, you've only got stuff to win. Like the, the managers that are uh, that are about are only going to be available next year as well, probably. Um, I mean, Poch wasn't good enough when they hired Ten Hag, like because he yeah. was interviewed for the job then. So why would he be the right guy now? Um, I just, I just don't see the point in it, really. And also, this is a, a point that I br- brought up in my stream, is like, if Ineos make that change, the clock starts ticking. Because yeah. whilst Ten Hag's there, he's not the guy that they've hired. So that you can kind of go, okay, well, it's all part of a process. We're changing everything in the background. We're changing how we bring our players in. We're doing all this kind of stuff. When they bring their own guy in, 
that's when the judgment starts happening on them. It's like, okay, well, you hired this guy, so he needs to start performing. Whereas I think when yeah. you've got Ten Hag in there, the like the that's not the case. The, the, there'll always be that thing of like, okay, well, it's not been working, but that's not their guy. Um, and I think making that decision before you've even got the likes of Dan Ashworth in and, and like the new um, CEO and all that kind of stuff, if, before they've even got them in through the door, if they're making that decision to get rid of a manager, it's a massive call. Um, and I think the fact that we've not heard anything today um, is probably more, it's more likely that there's going to be Ten Hag in the dugout next year. Purely because I think if they need to make a change, then you want to do it really quick. Because not, not yeah. just because, you know, we need to start signing players. Who's, who's going to sign for for a club if there isn't a manager there, or they don't know who the manager is? Like, yeah, I wonder. I I don't know. I've over the last couple of days, like I know obviously there are, because I've, I've seen today there's been more reports and sort of conflicting reports in terms of some people are running with it that he's definitely staying. Some people are running with that he's definitely going. Some people are running with they haven't made the decision yet. I from from the outside looking in, it feels to me as if a decision has pretty much already been made and like. I, 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 I get your point in terms of they might just be sounding out future candidates in case they're available however but like the, the social links have been there for for way too long now and i don't know i just feel like if they it's one of them i feel like he's going into the final year of his contract if they were going to like stick with him would they have offered him a new deal by now or would it be a case of like let's see how it goes in six months and if you know in six months it's cheaper to get rid of him maybe because I, I don't think it's an ideal situation for anyone to go into, for any club to go into it. You're managing the last year of your contract. You can, you've seen it with West Ham and Moyes this year, right? It's sort of one that sort of lack of clarity. I think it does sort of start feeding into the playing squad a little bit because no one really knows where, where they're going to be, where they stand for the following season. Um, so I don't know. I, I I get the impression looking in that they, I feel like they've already made their mind up on Ten Hag, and also just the like. Yeah, yes, they felt like a good opportunity for them to turn around and say, yeah, like he's our guy. Oh not yesterday, sorry. Like after after the cup final, yeah. um, feel like a good opportunity to like sort of almost sort of come out and say like, yeah, he's our guy, and sort of to not provide clarity on that, given the the, the news stories that have come out the day before as well. I don't know. It, it's it just feels like it's all heading in the same direction for me personally. Anyway, like I'm yeah, sorry, I'm wrong, but... I, I I don't disagree that they'll have made their mind up because if they haven't made their mind up yet, then they're doing a terrible job at running a football yeah. club. Um, yeah. I think for me like and i completely see it from your side as well like i agree that the fact that nothing's been said in in defense of him from the club is a is is pretty shocking to be honest like if if but for me it's like if you're going to be changing the manager then you need to do it as soon as possible like yeah just having this like stay of execution it almost feels like it's like okay well, well we'll delay it for a week and then it doesn't seem so bad that doesn't help anyone it doesn't help the players you're going to try and bring in because they don't know who they're they're going to be managed by doesn't help with the players that are still at the club because they don't know who the manager is. It doesn't help the manager because he might not need to go and get another job. Like yeah. at the end of the day, like it doesn't help anyone to be delaying stuff, which is why I think it might just be a case of he is sticking around. It, like you say, maybe it is even just going to be for six months. And if you if mm. we if we're eighth at Christmas and you know we've st we've still got the same issues, then then it might be a case of the go. Look, it's, this isn't working. Like the, there's the same issues that repeating that that were here last year. You've got more players. Like you've got fit squad. Hopefully. Uh, and it's still not working. Alternatively, it might be you're in the top three, you're playing really well, and we're, we're yeah, you know, we're through to the next round of the Europa. Like, <laughs> and it yeah. might be, all right, well, here's your new eighteen month con like an eighteen month extension or like a two year a new two year contract or whatever. That might be the case as well. Um, like I say, I I kind of hope he he sticks around more because I'm just not convinced that any of the other guys are an upgrade. Yeah. Like, I think it's just more a sidestep. And if you're taking that sidestep, why not just stick with the guy that you've got? Um, this yeah. guy's at least proved that he can work with his team and get a performance out of this team and do well with his team. Like I say, he's won two cups, finished third last year and got us into Europe again. Again, obviously by by the FA Cup, but we're back in Europe. Um, yeah. So yeah, like I don't think there's any any of those managers that are, that are linked or even that are available that are doing a more impressive job or that or have done significantly better with what they've got at their, their disposal. To be honest. And I think as well, I think to, to in 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 defence of Ten Hag from my side, I guess like he's got that base now, hasn't he? In terms of like, you got Garnacho, Mino, Poyland, um, and who's the other young player? Is like, young Ahmad's player? coming at the end of the season. He's Ahmad, doing really well. Ahmad, yeah, so. I'm thinking like, there's a, there's a picture of four of them. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> the full one was the four horsemen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you got a good base of like talent there, and like, I think with 
obviously you got a place for you got a place for Rand, but like if you can keep Martinez fit, like I say he was mega yesterday, but shoot showed himself to clearly be the most important player in Manchester. <laughs> he's he's <laughs> so anyone. good, man. Like I've, I've <laughs> almost forgotten how good he is. Like he had a, he had a yeah. great game, and then when he got subbed off and Cal Walker out for a fight, <laughs> it's like, yeah. the, the guy's got a screw loose. I love it. Like you, you need that kind of that kind of nutcase. We had it in Vidic. Is like he reminds me of Vidic yeah. in that kind of like. It's like, oh shit! I've, he might actually cut me. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the butcher for a reason. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but that's the thing. You got a good base there, like, and maybe like that's the thing. Now Ten Hag has got that, and it's something he he can sort of say to the board, like, look, this is my base. This is what I'm going to build off of. Like, this is you know, these are the players I want to build around. You need to get me the building blocks to to in order to make this work. I can finally start playing how I want to play. I think the the concern if. It, I guess from an Ineos perspective, the concern you would have is like over some of the tactical stuff from this year, like in terms of like, you know, how it easily have been cut apart and conceding the same type of goal week in, week out. But like you said, just because you change to a Tuchel or a Poch or a Deserby, whilst those specific issues might get fixed, another one might present itself in terms of like tactical reasons and stuff like that and player recruitment and stuff like Tuchel might not want to go with Kobe Minor in midfield and, and Garnacho as like, players to be relied on he might want to go with more experience whereas Poch will want loads of young players because that's what Poch is used to right and yeah it's it's, it's a tough one I think like you said it's, it's it, it definitely cranks the pressure up on Ineos I think if they make the call to get rid of him bring their own person in like you say it's it's all eyes are on them all of a sudden because they're they were meant to be the saviors right like they're meant to be the ones that come in and make everything better and yeah let's say if they get if they get the first managerial appointment wrong it's it's going to be a uh a spiky reception from the fan base to say the least yeah I, I could i could have totally seen it like and whilst i said you can't really just change your entire opinion on one game but i think if if united had gone out there and got battered five nil i think that i think him not keeping his job next season just would have been writing on the wall i think it's just like yeah. all right it's just shown that there isn't much there um but i think the fact that there was a performance players are back it just like i say there's there's nothing there that there's no manager there that i go oh my god we need to go out and get that guy because yeah. I just don't think there's any, there's no outstanding candidate. Is is all it is for me, um, and no outstanding candidate is kind of how. Well, may, maybe this is how he's got the job. Well, we're going to move on to Vincent Company, uh, getting the Bayern <laughs> Munich job, um, in the weirdest, <laughs> in the weirdest move. Like I said earlier, like last season he was getting linked with a load of uh, like jobs. He was linked with like the Spurs job, and everyone was going, mm. "That's a, that's a mad move. Like why why would they be doing that?" He's now managed to get Burnley sacked with one of the worst Premier League performances in history, and he's got the buying job. Like, <laughs> it's just proof. All you need to be is bald and no pep, and you'll get a job. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Bellamy's going to be the assistant manager at Bayern Munich. Yeah. Like, what, what, what universe are we in? <laughs> it is. It is the cursed football manager universe, isn't it? It really is. It really, really is. It, was, it reminds me. I, I had an FM save a couple of years ago that we're like sort of twenty, thirty years in. And for some reason, midway through the save, Bayern Munich hired Neil Lennon to be there. <laughs> and he was there. And he was there for about 15 years to the point where I eventually played him in the Champions League. And I didn't rehearse halfway through. I was playing at the Neil Lennon Arena. <laughs> and they just him after. <laughs> I was like, this is a fucking mental on timeline, this is. Fucking hell. That's, that's Neil Lennon Parkin. Yeah. I can't oh. believe it. So we could, you know, it's 15 years, the Vincent Company arena could be a thing. Well, this is this is the thing. thing. I, I did say this about a uh, company. Like, when, it, when this was being mooted, I said, like, I don't doubt that giving better players and, like, in playing the system that he wants to try and play, I don't think he'll fail. He'll have a good season. He, like, cause he'll just have better quality players to do his his kind of football with. My concern is more that like he's shown a blatant disregard of the club's well being almost in Burnley. Like, <laughs> it's like he's seen how crap they are after twenty games, and he's going, "This is fine. We'll just send. We'll just get, just get him relegated." It's like we don't need don't need to worry about any money. Rather than going, you know what? Let's be a bit pragmatic. Let's try and play yeah. a bit more on the counter. No, it was still just kind of everyone's everywhere trying to play open they're trying to play man city ball with league one players like it it was it was pretty mental and his that kind of stubbornness whilst whilst it's one of pep's kind of positives i think like i think managers do need to be a bit more flexible and it's kind of like shown with with ten Hag as well this year like when he when he kind of went all right yeah we need to be a bit more solid we've been more solid and we've, we've looked better 
Yeah. And, and it's, I mean, having players back helped, but, you know, like having that inability to be kind of almost self aware like, <laughs> is, is a bit of a worry, but. I think I think he'll he'll probably do fine. They've got they've got the best squad in Germany. Like I don't think he'll finish third, which like I say, it's got that's got two calls sacked and rightly so to be honest. Yeah, it's a tough one because I don't think this is I, I don't think the Bayern squad is actually in that great of a shape compared to what it has been in recent years. I know that obviously they've got Harry Kane, who I think just won the European Golden Boot. Like he's been that good. Like he's yeah. like forty odd goals, still couldn't win a trophy, which is just <laughs> got a feel from at this point. The course, um, the, the, the course, the, the the curse is real. <laughs> yeah, it might, it might well be. And then it's led to him getting Vincent Company as manager. I'm thinking, what the fuck am I doing? How is this happening to me? Like, oh, God. <laughs> went from bloody uh, Nuno at Spurs and now this. Like, how does this keep happening? <laughs> um, but like I said, I don't think the Bayern squad's in that great of a shape. Like, this, you know, talked about Alfonso Davis. I think he's entering the last year of his contract, heavily linked with a move to, to Real Madrid. Obviously, you've got Kane, but Thomas Muller's in the sort of end, end point of his career now. I think there's Kimmich hasn't been happy there for a while. Goretzka's sort of future has been up in the air for a while, from what I understand. Like, I, I'm not going to pretend like I've watched loads of Bayern this season. The few, the few times I have watched them, Uber Makano looks like he hasn't played football before. So, like, yeah. I, you know, for, for, a, for a manager doesn't really focus on defending, that'll be interesting. To see how, <laughs> to see how that pans out. Well, it's, it really shows how poor he's been this season that Eric Dyer's kind of taken his spot in the squad. And uh, like Maldini in the process. Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Like, it's, it was outstanding. It's like, what's what's Andrew done to him? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, but then also when you couple with the fact that Alonso is staying at Leverkusen for at least another year, I, and like I know there's sort of a, a growing thing of like, of like, oh well, they'll probably lose a lot of their good players though. I think they'll lose two. I think I think you'll, they'll most likely lose like Frimpong, maybe Boniface. But I don't, they think they've already come out and said unless we get a silly offer, we're not letting Verts go. Like, he'll be here for another year. Yeah. Like, they've got a really good squad. Obviously, they have Champions League, but they had Europa League this year and got to the final and still didn't lose a league game. Like, it's... Well, whilst I think it'll be unlikely that Bayer Leverkusen will have another unbeaten year next year, you've still got to look at them on current form and say, well, they'll be at the top next year. Stuttgart had a really good season this year. Obviously, if they lose Garassi, like, that'll, that'll hinder them a little bit. But their manager's obviously really well thought of. Done a fantastic job with them. And you've got Dortmund who are in the Champions League final and will probably look to strengthen in the summer as well. Like, So it's it's not an easy time to walk into Bayern Munich. And I think to take the chance on someone like company, and I, I'm saying this like they've, you know, they've turned down big managers to go and get him as like a big gamble when the reality is every big manager turned them down. So they kind of, it's like, well, it's either Vincent Company or David Moyes. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> well, it this is the other side of it as well, isn't it? It's like, how confident is company walking into that job knowing, knowing that he is yeah. like the fifth or sixth choice? Because, like, loads of managers, like, they wanted to keep, uh, wanted to keep Tuchel. He said no. Um, yeah. <laughs> like, they tried to keep, they tried to do a Barca with him. He's told him to do one. Um, and, like, other managers who have publicly said that they don't want, they don't want the job. So it's like, going in there knowing you're not the first choice, it's going to be, and, and I wonder how that much will affect the players as well. Like, if the players yeah. are going, oh, right, so this guy is the fifth choice guy that you wanted to keep, wanted to manage us. Like, oh, right. Um, I, I yeah. wonder how it'll go. I don't, like I say, he's he's obviously a talented coach. Like you don't manage to turn around Burnley in the way that he did and get them playing the football they did yeah. in the championship without being a good coach. But whether he can do it at the elite level with those kind of not just egos, but like that kind of expectation as well, um, I dare say he's got a cool head on his shoulders. He was a captain of Man City. Like he he knows yeah, what, he knows course. what pressure at the top level is. But doing it in a management in the dugout is going to be very different to doing it on the pitch, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, and it's going to be a. Uh, it's, 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 I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes. I'm not willing to write him off completely, but I just think it's a it's a, it's a difficult time to come in come into that job, and I I'd be very surprised if Bayern are looking at this and going, "This is like a five year thing. We'll see how it goes. We'll see or like a three year thing. We'll see." But in three years, we'll be right back to where we want to be, and we'll be fine. Because but and even if that was the case, you had Nagelsmann, who's like. 28 <laughs> he's yeah. like a child basically in terms of football managers like you skateboarding him, you around let... yeah and you had him and you let him go because you didn't like his scooter and you were and thomas tuchel was available like <laughs> and now look where you've ended up <laughs> like, now look at you you did this to yourself yeah so i i i, I don't know what the thinking is like like i say it's probably they've recognized like i say he's obviously a very good coach pep's probably he comes with pep's recommendation as well most likely like, i know pep's come out and said like he'll he, he Bleeds company will manage City one day. Pep fucking talks big about every manager though, because none, none of them are a threat to him, so it's easy to do so. <laughs> um, 
yeah, I'm, I'm fascinated to see how that turns out, especially less so in the league, actually, more so in the Champions League, because like you're coming up, you're not just coming up against like mid up, like mid table German teams in the Champions League. You're coming up against like, you know, in theory, some of the best teams in Europe. Like obviously, depending on where the new format's gonna sort of how the fixtures are gonna roll out under the new format, but they're gonna come. He's gonna come up a lot, come up against a lot of different tests and a lot of different managers and a lot of different tactical styles in the Champions League. And it'll be interesting to see how we. He hasn't really had experience of that. I don't think Anderlecht were in Europe. Or not, at least not in the Champions League when he was manager of Anderlecht. They might have been like the Conference League or the Europa League or whatever. But yeah, I, 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 interesting how that how that goes. But yeah, it's, it's a weird it's a weird one. It's gonna be look it's gonna look really weird when you watch the first game of the season in the Bundesliga and Vincent Company is in the Bayern Munich dugout. It's gonna be really <laughs> odd. In a tiny Bayern Munich hut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's enough of the caps, Vincent. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> You're young, all right. <laughs> but just just come on. <laughs> um, I mean, you kind of, you kind of like mentioned him there a little bit, like Pep. Um, it's been announced that well, it's, let's say it's been announced. It's been widely reported that he's going to be off at the end of his contract. Uh, so Get in. <laughs> come on, football is saved. <laughs> no more boring pet ball. Um, so, I mean, but that is a massive, massive thing as well. So you'd think that if, if that is true, uh, there's going to be another big managerial merry-go-round at the end of next season because who's going to step into there? Is it going to be like they want to go for a similar kind of manager? They're going to do like a similar process to what, to what Bayern did. Uh, so, so, sorry, to what Barca did after... Um, after he left there, are they going to go for um, like Xavi's going to be available? Um, are they going to try and hold out for him and see what he can do there? <laughs> just, just, just keep the Bar- the old Barcelona dudes rolling. Yeah. Um, but also, like, there's there's the other thing of like, why isn't he signing a new contract? Why isn't he continuing? It, does he know something? <laughs> eyebrows, eyebrows, hundred and fifteen Xavi's. <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's, think... seen, he's seen what's happened with Baquetta and just gone fuck I can't bother yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't be bothered finding just... another one <laughs> yeah, if, I through, if I sit through one more hearing oh, yeah. <laughs> get me out <laughs> it's, um, it's interesting though because maybe it is a little bit of that like he sees how many how much of his the core of his team is going to need replacing in the next few years like there's a lot yeah. of talks of, of Edison going to, uh, to Saudi um, like and from what I understand like not that it would be welcomed but like the, the might be open to it, and like so, there's going to be like a, a potential replacement of a keeper. Kevin De Bruyne is made of glass these days, and he's 34. Like he's not going to be, yeah. he's not going to be a mainstay at the club of oh, 33 or 34 or something. Uh, he's not going to be a mainstay every every week kind of player for them anymore. Obviously, they've got some really good young players like Phil Foden, and and I think Rodri's only 26 or something. Yeah, Cavani uh, Ho- was like what 24, like yeah, 20, Holland as well. Like, yeah, but it's there's still going to be a a, a lot of turnaround because. Like I say, like the, the the core of what has been a part of that team in Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne and like and players like, and Kyle Walker as well, like yeah. are going to need replacing in the next few years. And I wonder whether he's looking at going. I can't be asked. Like I've already bought eighty players. I can't be. <laughs> I can't be bothered <laughs> buying another another twenty to try and find a good right back. <laughs> yeah, I I I think it's. I, I think we 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 said a few times this year, didn't we? We wouldn't be surprised if he. If they won the league again, he'd, he'd sort of walk at the end of this season. Yeah, um, he's looking and I think a bit he bored. Just... Like, yeah, and, and he gave and the I... the saltiest interview ever after the FA Cup. I didn't but clock it... the interview. I heard it was quite salty. Oh, but I, didn't, I didn't. It stick was hilariously. It was hilariously salty. He's like, uh, I think it was like um, the interviewer said, "Oh, you said you you didn't mind losing if the better team won." And he said, "Do you think the better team won?" He just went. No. <laughs> like, oh, so you didn't watch the game then, did you? <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. No. United were United. Yeah. Fully. Fully. I think I said on Twitter that was that was the best I've seen United play all season. Like, yeah. It's, it's, it's the best uh, I've seen us play since. Uh, I, I said it on stream. I think it's the best I've seen us play since Paris. Because <laughs> <laughs> even when we beat Liverpool four three, it, it, we weren't very good. We were playing Bruno at centre back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most of the times in that one. But no, yeah, with with, with, the, with the final, yeah, like yeah, fully deserved winners. City were toothless, I thought. But um, yeah, I I I think we yeah. So I think I wouldn't have been surprised. I think if they won the Champions League and the league again, I think he probably would have walked anyway this season. But like you said, it might be a case of like, has he? How much hunger has he got to rebuild the squad again? And like, realistically, like, is it, it's not even a challenge anymore for him. Like we said, we spoke about this last week in terms of, you know, how how non-competitive the league really is in terms of winning the league, and and how big a reason he and Man City are for that. But I think for even for someone like him, who is like loves winning stuff as well, he must still want a bit of a challenge again. He must be at a point now where it's just like. I could go somewhere else. Like, 
he's done it in Spain, he's done it in, in Germany, now he's done it in England. Like maybe he's looking at Italy and thinking, look, there's maybe there'll be a, a, a job in, in Italy I can take and go and win something there. Or maybe the PSG job will become available in like a year or year or two time. Go and win I can go and be the first guy to win the Champions League with PSG. Like maybe that's his thing. Cut out uh, the middleman and just go work in the Middle East. <laughs> yeah, get, basically. Get the money yeah. directly from there rather than an offshore. Yeah, bank take, take, take <laughs> the Saudi national team job. Yeah. Fuck it, why not? Um, <laughs> but no, I think I speak for everyone when I say the day the day that Pep Guardiola leaves the Premier League will be the greatest day the Premier League's ever seen. I can't <laughs> fucking wait for it. Honestly, it's just that, that, I'm so sick of it. I'm sick of the loving. I'm sick. Of, and I, I I get it. He's great. He, he's a good manager. He's brilliant. Hundred point. Who cares? It's it's boring. It's boring as piss watching Man City just like even in the final. I'm watching them like two goals down, needing to get a goal. They get the ball near the area. Ends up going back to the centre back. It's like, yeah. what are you doing? You've got a six foot four mutant in the box. No <laughs> long for once. <laughs> like, for crying out pass, loud. Pass <laughs> the best striker in the world the ball once, will you, please? That's the thing. I saw people going, oh, another game that Haaland's ghosted. They didn't give him the ball. Like, what, do you, what do you want him to do? Like, yeah. ridiculous. Haaland's on the sideline going, I know how it feels, mate. <laughs> yeah. <it's> just... <laughs> we'll talk after the game. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I can't. I, 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 I can't wait for the day he leaves. And in terms of who they get, like it will probably be like the, the geezer is at uh, Girona. Was it M- Michelle Mikel? Oh yeah, he's yeah, like yeah. obviously part of the city group, right? Like um, seems to play a similar type of football. Or like I always thought, Deserve would actually be a pretty nailed on pet replacement, and or a nailed on city manager in the future. Obviously, now it depends on what his next job's going to be. I think. I think yeah. if he was still at Brighton and they were doing well, he'd sort of be earmarked as like one one for them, but. Or maybe it'll be Enzo Maresca. <laughs> <laughs> if Enzo Maresca leads him to the uh, leads Chelsea to the title, he'll be he'll be straight in there, I think. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, f- fingers cr- sooner rather than later for me. I, I'm I'm so bored of City and Pep, and I just I, just, I do I do genuinely believe once he leaves, City's dominance, the City won't be as dominant. I, I I know that people say it's just City as a whole make the league boring. I do think Pep is a bigger part of that though. I think once he goes, you'll see, you won't you won't see City be anywhere near as consistent as they were. Prior yeah. to him but coming, so and it's and with Pep, it's almost it's, yeah, you're winning, but at what cost? Like you, you're yeah, dull as dishwater to watch. <laughs> it's just, yeah, exactly. It's, it's boring ball. Um, so if and... if they if he goes and they get someone else in, like someone who's a little bit less experienced, and it will just open up to being like City win it one year, Arsenal win it the next, Liverpool, whoever. So it becomes a little bit more exciting in terms of in for the neutral, just to see how the title race unfolds. I don't know. I could go back to United winning 13 of 20. Well, that'd be fine. I'm sure you could. <laughs> I'm sure you could. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> well, speaking of former Barcelona managers, uh, should we talk about the shit show at Barcelona? <laughs> how long have we got? <laughs> fucking, fucking, oh. uh, it's, it is hilarious that, that, like, after Xavi initially said he's leaving, the, there was, like, months of wooing and convincing him to stay. <laughs> For please, him to just go, please, Sammy. <laughs> oh, we, well, we can't really sign loads of players, so we'll, we'll have to work hard next season. <laughs> Laporte has gone, absolutely not. <laughs> 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 I will not have you say that about this club. And it's just, he just booted him. <laughs> I, I will spend far too much money on players we don't need. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't have you stopping me. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, so, yeah, Hansi Flick's coming in for however long he's going to be there. Which, which who was actually speaking of Hansi Flick, he was w- the one guy I think. If United had gone, we're bringing in Hansi Flick. I'd have gone, fair enough. The guy's got the highest win rate in f- professional football history. Cool. I, I mean, he, yeah. he was he was only at Bayern for three years, but I think he won he won the Champions League, and they think he's got like an eighty five percent win rate. You know what? He's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, didn't he, yeah, didn't his Bayern side batter Barca like seven two or like seven nil or something like yeah, that? Yeah, wasn't that like... when the, they borrowed Coutinho? <laughs> Coutinho batter. <laughs> That was fantastic. I, I I don't know about you. Like I um so when like I first started getting into football and stuff and you first started discovering the sort of European teams and whatnot, I always loved Barcelona. They were they were like my European team. Because like, I know that's kind of like you know, obvious, right? But like I think in terms of like the Real Madrid Barca rivalry, like you've got Real Madrid who are sort of all about the Galacticos and it's like spend loads of money, just get the best buy all the best players possible, spend whatever you want. And you had Barca, who obviously did spend money, but there was like a little bit more pureness to them because I've said a lot of players come through their academy. Like obviously, had likes of you have that whole class of like Messi, Iniesta, Busquets, Xavi, and all that. Um, and then you, they go and spend a bit of money on bringing a bit of flair, quality in terms of like Ronaldinho and and Samuetto and people like that, just sort of shrewd signings. 
And it felt very much felt like the Yings around Madrid Yang in that sense. It's almost like Real Madrid were the evil guys and Barcelona were the good guys, sort yeah. of trying to take them down by playing football the right way and stuff. To see where they are now, it's just they're just a shadow of the club they used to be. It's just it's embarrassing. It's just watching them just spaff money up the wall and like get to a point where every single season now it's like sign six players can only register two of them so <laughs> <laughs> let's pick them out of a hat and see which one's going to play this season yeah. like, who's, who's taking the pay cut <laughs> yeah it's like they signed gundigan last summer and it was like he might not be able to play for three months we need to, we need to shift some money out of the club and it, we need to sell some more like naming rights or whatever and it's just and now they've sold off all their future just... earnings for the next decades of 100 years yeah <laughs> so they're not going to make any more money so just sick of seeing like Laporta like just running his mouth in press conferences every week. I know it's more of a thing in Spain that like you hear more from the presence of the club and stuff. I get that, but like, yeah, it's just an absolute shit show. And like you say, for, for them to spend two months doing their absolute best to convince Xavi to stay, and he bless him, he was like, no, I'm not, I'm not staying. I'm definitely going. I'm definitely going. And he's fine. I'll stay. And, like, and to sack him, like I say, just to, just because he said probably shouldn't spend loads of money in the summer, like <laughs> maybe. You know, maybe don't do that. And they just they just thrown the toys out of the pram and got rid of them anyway. It's just they're a... it's just for me it's sad. Like so I used to, I used to really, really love Barcelona and now I just I just despise them. Like mm. there's not the club that I, I knew growing up. It's they've all, they've shown themselves to not be that kind of I feel like in the, like all the all the myths of of like the 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 right side of history of football in Spain, like they do it right. They always bring through lo loads of youth players. They don't spend all the money. Like they've just they've like kind of just ruined all that. And not only that, they've got one of the most rabidly kind of defensive fan bases on uh, that I can see on the internet as well. Like if you say any negative thing about Barcelona, and it is like a pack of wolves will come come after you. It's like well, yeah. you know, it, it's not it's not Barcelona's fault. It's the league's fault. It's like dude, you you you're a billion like billions in debt. Like billions yeah. in, with a B in there. <laughs> like it's, that's not the league's <laughs> fault. That is the club's fault. Like, like, yeah. How, how can you? How can you not see that? And it's like, oh no, it's it's the league and not letting us sign like to, to register these players. Like we should be able to spend this money. It's like, no. Like, you, and, and this kind of whole myth of, I think the I think La Masia like is there's a lot of heavy lifting done by that naughty side with the La Masia history. Like there, there yeah. is obviously like a there is a history of like having having a few players in, in in the squad and stuff, but I think like there's other other academies that produce just as much, if not more, players. Like speaking of, of, of like teams like Bayern Munich, they always bring players through. Real Madrid bring players through. Like <clears throat> yeah, of course they've always they've always got that kind of that kind of player there, and um and and seeing them kind of I don't know just kind of embrace the dark side almost like and and becoming <laughs> becoming that 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 evil character in the in, in the football world it's um yeah it's, it's it's a weird thing to watch but it's almost like the 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 true colors have been shown like after all this time yeah. it's like the, the the veil has lifted a little bit and it's like oh no like you you, you could we've seen through the cracks now we can't unsee this and it's like and it is just an absolute disaster case I say it's just frustrating though, because like even I I I, I get what you I get what you're saying about like sort of that that La Masia side from like the, the noughties and stuff. But even like this, even like the last couple of years, you look at the players they've brought through, who've arguably been, out of all the billions they've spent on players, it's the players coming through the academy who've been the better, the more consistent performers. Oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Pedri, Gavi, Lamina Mal. Like I think they've had a couple of um, defenders come through like this season who've been really solid, like uh, Kubasi and, and those kind of ones. yeah. So when, when all that stuff was happening about like all their financial troubles, like you're saying, it was around that time when yeah, all their fans were just like, "It's not our fault." It's like, well, <laughs> it is <laughs> our fault. Like it's, you're, you are just wrong. <laughs> Sorry, but like that was a perfect time to sort of lean back on that and go, "Okay, we are going to rein the spending a little bit more, and we're going to bring these crop players through, and we're just going to we're going to give them time to grow as a team." And in, in we're not going to challenge now, but in five years when they're all like in their early twenties, mid twenties, we'll be right back on the top again. And I think that would have at least in terms of like public opinion, which I'm sure I, I, I'm under no illusion, Barca don't really care about public opinion outside of their own fan base, right? Why should they? But I think, yeah, in terms of that, like fans from around the world watched them, they had a lot more sway on their side rather than now where it's just like no one really cares. Everyone just, again, no one really cares about them anymore. Like it's just yeah. a bit like. And then on the flip side, you've got, you know, the power of Carlo and Charlie's eyebrow just making everyone love football again. Like, <laughs> it's like they, they've they've become they've become the good guys in the situation. It's yeah, like, how are Real Madrid more likable than Barcelona? Yeah. Like, how has that? Like, it's insane. Who's like, like, England's that best happen? midfielder? Yeah, they've got England's best midfielder. Like you say, they've got the, the coolest manager that's ever managed. Yeah. <laughs> like Carlo and Charlie. <laughs> like, All he does is just raises an eyebrow, point. lights a cigar, and they just win another Champions League. 
Um, <laughs> speaking of, it's Champions League next week, or this weekend, coming weekend. It uh, is, so yeah. The the inevitable cha- Champions League win for Real Madrid coming again. I'd love for Dortmund to do it, but... They won't. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Although I said, that, I said that again about United in the, in the DFA Cup, so you never know. Yeah. It, it, would, yeah, be the, the it would be the fairy tale ending. That's the thing. Um, well, another, another final game that was played over the weekend as the season is sort of like crawling itself over the finish line. Uh, obviously, we had the championship playoff final. I don't know if you managed to watch it, Sanson versus Leeds. Uh, I watched I watched bits of it. So I watched like most of the first half, bits of the second half. Like it was, it wasn't a very good game of football, was it? Like, uh, no. I was hoping to see because like the, the two teams that have played good football, like the, over the course of the season, I've caught a few games. Like I, wa- I watch a bit of championship football, caught a few games uh, over the course of the season both played some decent football and it just wasn't that uh, but I, I mean you mentioned it before we kind of started like uh, these the championship final games are never kind of barnstormers it's, it's always a very cagey affair yeah it's just it's just so much riding on it isn't there and it's like i think there's I, there, there must be a, there must be a statistic out there of how many of them end up finishing one nil or like goalless and go to penalties just because like no team wants to take a risk and you you kind of got proven that because with Ethan Ampadu taking the risk by stepping into midfield, and he got punished, like yeah. and that's the, obviously how Southampton got their goal. Um, I mean, at the end yeah, of the day, interesting. football one because Leeds didn't get promoted. So, yes, <laughs> I think we, we could all rejoice. But I think Southampton are already one of my favourites to go straight back down next year because, like, they're it's I don't think it's that good of a squad, and I, I think Martin is some Russell Martin is someone who's going to be um, who's going to be first up. I think for getting sacked. Just again, I think he's going to go the same way what we spoke about earlier in terms of wants to play this sort of certain way heavy possession base playing out from the back sort of thing um and i think it's gonna get massively found out in the premier league and i think they'll 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 again so Anton aren't gonna want to go straight back down they were they were fairly mainstay in the premier league before their relegation they're not going to want to go straight back down again so I, again that I, I mentioned i mentioned in valester i think that it's someone that's a club that will look at someone like david Moyes to bring in yeah. to sort of keep him afloat and stabilize them for a few years which to be fair i think for a club like science and that's what they'll need they'll need someone like david Moyes to come in just Lock lock up shop a little bit and just keep a mid like sort of upper lower mid table for sort of three four years before they re- they feel ready enough to kick on again. Yeah, they kind of like do what Brighton did, like you know just just yeah. stabilize yourself in the league and then look at your next steps. Because like looking at that that Leicester squad, unless they put some big money into it, which I don't think they will do, that it's a significantly worse squad than the one that got relegated. Um, yeah, and so I <clears throat> yeah I, d- I don't see them. Um, they're not going to be one of those surprise teams that uh, that kind of end mid table. But then again, at the start of last season, I said Burnley were going to finish mid table. So what do I know? I know I absolutely nothing about all, football. We've all learned our lesson from Burnley, haven't we? It was a, <laughs> Sol, Sol's law. Southampton will qualify for Europe this year. We're like, oh God, like, like, yeah. why is it impossible to predict? Um, <laughs> Leicester wins yeah, the title thought, with, uh, with Graham Potter. Yeah. Well, yeah. So Paddy Potter's been going back to Brighton. That's the rumor. That's the rumor. Oh today. yes, I saw that on the on the uh. today. We'll uh, we'll see. It wouldn't it wouldn't be the worst movie. Obviously, he's he's not been gone that long. He's uh no. Go back to where he was actually doing pretty well. Um, yeah, it's like a nice little vacation, isn't it? So yeah. he's had a nice little sabbatical. Yeah. Went to, Chelsea, to went to Chelsea for a few weeks. Got a few million quid in the bank, <laughs> and I'm back. <laughs> 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 yeah, interesting how that goes. But yeah, it's going to be in terms of the promoted teams. It's going to be. Pardon me. It's going to be interesting in terms, in terms of, especially with Leicester as well, needing a new manager in terms of who they're going to get in to try and keep them afloat. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Like we've just seen an, un- an unprecedented bad season from all the, the relegated clubs. Like I think it was twenty seven points that have kept you up, twenty eight points that have kept you up. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we're we're going into what's arguably teams with going to be have have better squads, but the team that's got promoted in first is lost is losing their manager. It seems. So that's going to be an upheaval. You've got Ipswich, who have just done back-to-back promotions, so there's no chance that their squad's anywhere near the level for the Premier League. As good as a coach as McKenna is, and as as well as he's going to get those players those players playing, I can see it being more of like a a, a Luton experience where it's like the the players just aren't at the level. Like no matter yeah. how hard you try, if the players just aren't at the level, then it's it's just not going to work. And then yeah, like we say, Southampton, who have got a worse squad than the team that took them down. Um, so it's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting season. Someone's gonna to have to try really hard to get relegated next year <laughs> from the teams that are still up in the prem. I'm sure Everton will try. It's not it's not get music. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Greek <Grease> music? <laughs> yeah, it's much, yeah. It's early spoiler for my predictions going into next season. Yeah. I think Forest are bang in trouble. I think. Um... Yeah, I think Leicester might do okay because I think I think they'll actually get someone. I think the Leicester job is still probably quite appealing for a lot of sort of 
fairly decent managers. I think they'll be okay. And with Ipswich, well, apparently I saw today, I saw just before we went live, I saw went live before we started recording, that um, the the new contract that McKenna's going to be on, he's going to be one, of the, he's going to be one of the be- like best paid managers in the league. I don't know what number in terms of where he ranks, but he's going to be like one of the highest earners. So they've already they're, they're they're shedding a lot of their money on McKenna being good enough to actually keep him up. It seems like because well, you know rather than spending maybe they money. will throw like some some money at it then like some of the like projected earnings and yeah so, I'll be honest like when I've seen them like it's it's a squad that that play good like play really well and they have got some like some really good young talent in there so if they can bring in two or three like experienced players like we, we saw Luton do it like bringing in Ross Barkley and like if they can bring in like a, a couple of Premier League experienced players maybe just like that bit of a spine like bringing a defender and a midfielder and a forward like may, maybe the maybe they will be okay maybe they can get everything to click around it because um yeah and and you know if they're, they're giving him that bigger contract they they definitely believe in him um or maybe they're giving him a big contract so they can get a big payout when he gets nicked in 12 months time <laughs> maybe, yeah maybe that's more, maybe that's got more to do maybe that's got more to do with it big old release clause in there probably you'd imagine yeah the nice a nice big fat one um but yeah well uh well that's just the, the first week it's not even been a week since the the, the league's finished because like i don't think the year technically finished until the fa cup um so no. in, in, the, in the last few days in the first week of off season um that's that's what's been happening with the managers so it's only going to get worse it's only going to be, be more chaotic uh, i saw yeah. the, um the porto manager as well he's he's off he's decided he's off so Oh, he's the one that always turns around and says that an opposition manager slagged, slagged him off or something, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, Conte he's, he's like, Yeah. Because <laughs> he turned around and said, Arteta said something about his mum or something. And then <laughs> someone went someone went and looked back. He's like, he said this about every manager who's knocked him out of the Champions League. Like, he turned around and go, he said something, he didn't shake his hands, he said something really offensive. And it's like, come on, man. It's all your mums. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just out there slagging off everyone's mom and he's like, just reflecting back on him um <laughs> we'll, we'll move on from our hour long manager talk um and, and we'll do we'll probably do it again next week and when another six managers move um and we'll move on to the fantastic news uh of west ham's most influential player is probably never going to kick a ball again um and you're either <laughs> he's either never going to play for you or you're not going to get your 80 million um so that's good. <laughs> what a f- what a first day for Lopetegui, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, like, he's got to he's got to have been warned about this, right? He must no, he, he must have known. been told about it. But imagine if he hadn't. He just walks in and he's like, "Oh, cool! Can't wait to start spending that money." Ah, about that. <laughs> yeah, he's off. Well, the apparently, <laughs> say, well, apparently he's been researching the job for like months, right? So, like I say, he would have known. And I think he would have been aware that there is a chance that he could get charged for this. I don't think he would have expected to be on the day that he got announced as manager. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was literally like, Lopetegui announced two hours later, Paquette has been charged. It's like, yeah. <laughs> just, just sitting in his office going, right, I've got Twitter and see what Twitter's, how, how the news is being received with me getting the job. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> just Googling West Ham. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, um, it's not know. good. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, I mean, for I mean, I'm sure everyone knows about what's going on, but he's been charged with uh, four uh, counts of spot fixing, which I think a single charge has a maximum uh, term of ten years of of uh, ban. There's a pres- there's a presence for it, yeah. Yeah, like... and I, th- I think there was what there was a player in Scotland, I think, who got banned for six years for a, mm. a spot fixing. So to have four of them, he could legitimately never play football again. Um, yeah. which is is terrible. I mean. As, from what i heard as well it was all traced back because there was big way the wages i think was it was it you put this in the in the discord mm. uh there was big wages on on um on yellow cards i think it was for him in, in certain games from a tiny village in brazil <laughs> it's like yeah these, cool has these guys not heard of vpns like <laughs> yeah from a, from a from an island in brazil now just to give just to leave with this lucas paquette is brazilian so lucas paquette is not his actual name like he's got a full name and stuff the, the tiny town in Brazil is called Paqueta Island. So it's where he's from. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's quite... You, don't have to be, you, you haven't got to be in line of duty to put two and two together. There. You haven't got to be Sherlock Holmes, have you? Like, yeah. to go, hmm, <laughs> I wonder if there's a link. <laughs> like, um, yeah. I didn't realise it, it was Paqueta yeah. Island. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
It's not great, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Opera GX has a free uh, has a free VPN, lads. Just use that next yeah, time. Yeah, I know. Yeah. All, the, all good VPNs are available, but yeah, there's <laughs> loads of them. Um, if they want to sponsor us, that'd be great. Um, we, can, we send this to him. Um, <laughs> oh, God. So yeah, just to, just got, to clear sorry, up because got me that. <laughs> yeah, that's just mental, honestly. Only only literally only at West Ham could this happen. Um, <laughs> So just to clear up for anyone, yeah, for anyone who's not sure, because I've quite a few people, because obviously I'm the I'm the rest of the West Ham guy in the FM community, so obviously I'm the, I'm the one everyone comes to for this sort of stuff. Some people say to me, "Have you seen this?" Oh, no, I haven't. Weird. Like, like of course <laughs> I have. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Nah, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not opened my phone today. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, um. See, because I've had a few people saying, "Oh, will he get like eight months?" Then like Ivan Tony did or Tonali did, and it's like, no, 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 no. This is much worse. Like what? Because I, I think there are some people under the impression that he's the one placing bets. So what? What's essentially happened is, like you said, a bunch of bets have been placed on him getting yellow cards from where he grew up, or he being Pukatar <laughs> Island, um, and it's on certain games, and obviously those yellow cards have come in. And I, I think, <laughs> ironically, <laughs> the company that flagged it uh, were Betway. Who's the main sponsor on West Ham shirt? It's Betway. Ding, ding. Yes. Correct. The survey <laughs> says it was Betway. Um, so Bet Betway, the ones have gone, ah, that doesn't look right. And, and funny enough, there was actually a tweet from like last season. Uh, not the season, just gone the season before. It's like some random Arsenal fan going, it's really weird. Lucas Paquette is like three to one to get booked. But he's only been booked like three times this year. So it's really weird odds for a player who never gets booked that often. So he'd obviously clocked that the odds had changed due to the amount of money that was being, and the yeah, amount of yeah. bets that were coming in on him getting booked. <laughs> That is before any of this stuff came out. So obviously, everyone found that tweet and was just like, "Dude, what the fuck?" And then, um, and then there's the the the, the video <laughs> of all the tackles. Some, the of, some yeah. of them I, I can see like it's just a tackle that happens in a game. There, yeah. there, is, there is one that is pretty damning though, where he's like he scythes through someone, doesn't get a yellow, so then chases back and scythes through someone else and gets. Yeah, a that yellow. one's not great. Yeah. I will. I, I will <laughs> that one's not great. <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not his lawyer. <laughs> yeah, we're, like, we're, not, we're ignoring that one. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's fair enough. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Whilst that one isn't great, I will say just to offer some leeway of defence or some benefit of doubt here, like having seen Baquetta play even before this sort of stuff happened. He does like to lunge in, like that's sort of been a part of his game, sort of the entire time he's been here. And I do think with those those clips, I think if you if I was to show you those clips, without the context of he's being investigated for deliberately getting booked, I don't think many people would sort of look at it and view it as suspicious. Just they're just poorly timed challenges. Um, I mean, Paul Scholes is knackered if that's the case. <laughs> that's the thing, right? That's the thing. He might, he's, he's, he's just I, you would just look and go, he's just naff at tackling, which is for a flair play you kind of expect. The difficulty is is that well obviously he's come out and denied all of it so i think you know you kind of got to go with the with the presumption of innocence until proven otherwise but obviously this is the fa it's not like the fucking like the, the, it's not uk criminal law i don't i don't i don't know if they need to rely on finding proving it beyond reasonable doubt they did it if they feel they've got enough evidence they probably can just go no we're fine with you know we're finding you guilty sort of thing obviously with the non league player they got 10 years he wouldn't have had the lawyers that Paquette will have. So it's up to that. So they, they might have a better chance of proving that, or not proving that he had any knowledge of this happening. Um, and apparently he's been cooperating with the FA the entire time. Worryingly thing about that is I, I do think one of the charges is related to not handing over evidence when requested. I need to, I, I do need to double check it, but some, someone pointed that out. And that's, if that's the case, it's not a good look. Yeah. If you if you're not handing it, if you because surely if you're innocent, you're you're you, you you know you haven't done anything wrong. You'd hand everything over to go look, find find it, find the proof. Um, but yeah, it's not it's either way. It's, it's everyone loses here. West Ham potentially lose out on eighty five million quid. Lucas Piquet probably loses out on his footballing career. And it, look, if he's done this, if he's guilty, good. He deserves to. He's a moron. Like, what are you doing? Like, just if you have got people back home and need a bit of money. Give them the money. You earn enough. Like you well, don't yeah, need to be the, doing these fucking. This is you know, the thing. Doing, like the amount of money that was the, bets. the amount of money that was won, isn't going to be anywhere near the amount of money that he makes. Like so, if if he, he's doing it in in order to send some like to earn some money for some people back home, just give them the money. Don't risk your entire fucking career over it. It's just yeah. it's just stupid. And like he's going to miss out on his move to City. Like I say City. Boohoo, obviously, right? But City miss out on a play they wanted, like that, and this could be, this could even implement new, like this could be the ripple effect of it, right? 
City miss out on Paqueta, they go, all right, we'll I'll get Bruno Gamares instead. And then Newcastle miss out on that one of their best players. So it's like it, it it affects more than just one party with this. And it's like say if he's found guilty of it and it's proven that he has done it, it's it's incredibly disappointing, like and it's fu- it's it fucks the club over massively, who have stood by him throughout this whole thing. Even when he's not played well, played him, you know, made him the poster one of the poster boys of the club and gave him his chance in England when, let's face it, not many clubs were looking to give him a chance when he was playing in France. So um I hope for his sake and the club's sake that it's not the case and it gets found to he gets found innocent and whether he stays or goes to see, I don't really like whatever, right? Like, I just hope that well, for think, his sake, it's not that way. Yeah, I, th- I think you'd already like come to terms with the fact that he was going to be leaving in the summer anyway. Like, yeah, a, 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 another kind of knock-on effect. I wonder whether, well, I wonder whether it would be a knock-on effect. Like, would it mean that you, if West Ham were, were banking on that that cash to invest in the summer, is that going to like mean you have to sell a different player? Like, is is Kudus going to be on on the cards now to to leave rather than rather than Paqueta? Mm-hmm. Like, because he he'd command a similar kind of fee, right? If that was something that they were banking on for the rebuild for the new manager, um, yeah. Obviously, you don't want to lose Paqueta, but like maybe it could be a case of like, well, we kind of need to sell players to buy players now. Like, uh, you know, it's that's still the case. Yeah, there's not really I, many I th- other very kind of cashable assets. I think at the club. Yeah, I think I think we're okay in that regard. I think Kudus will have a release clause kick in next summer for the mm. same price. So I think we're, from what I understand, because uh, there are people who understand football finance is way way better than I do that have talked about this. But from what my understanding is, because I don't think the Declan Rice money counts towards last year finances, it will count towards this year's financial report. Right. So in terms of F- in terms of like PSR and FFP, the Declan Rice hundred million pound money will sort of sharp on this sort of new year's reports which means we'll have a lot a, li- a lot more wiggle room a lot more flexibility in the, in the transfer market than a lot of other clubs would do um and i think we just reported our biggest ever like turnover or something like our, our, our financials for the they've just come out are really really good and the best they've been in a long time so i don't i, I think the budget will be fairly sizable like i don't know how much i'm gonna guess between 80 and 100 before the baquette money so i think we'll be okay in that regard but obviously take that to 185 million it's even better yeah um, yeah it, it, and it, it, it takes the, the levels of of what you can expect to bring in up doesn't it yeah and it just gives the new manager clarity on what he's got to work with because at the moment it, from what i think he was reported the other day from uh, phone off the same guy the guardian journalist who did the ten hag story who is more reliable for west ham news the west ham prepared for either paquette being here or not be or being sold or not being sold i don't know if they prepared for the instance of him being here but not being able to play is, yeah. <laughs> is the only thing um, but I imagine if he's found guilty, we'll have grounds to terminate his contract and probably sue him, which I think has been reported as a likely road will go down. You look at what happened with uh, Chelsea and Adrian Mutu, like what twenty odd years ago. Yeah, like got done for a for for a drugs ban, and they sued him for like fifteen million quid because he was like only a year into his contract. So yeah, yeah, you've you've basically you've they, they've they've agreed to pay you an amount of money. You've you've paid an amount of money for it to register that play, for the registration rights of that player. Yeah, on the understanding that they're going to be available for the entirety of that contract. If you're yeah. not due to you, then you're li- like I assume you'd be liable for what you know, whatever kind of value it is on on, on that diminishing returns. Yeah, kind of thing. obviously it's not going to so... be a full eighty million, but you know it'll be whatever his his listed value is at for the remainder of his contract. I assume. Yeah, um, yeah. I've just I've just gone through kind of like the your, your ins and well not your ins and outs West Ham's ins and outs for uh if you've got two hundred million let me know um <laughs> West Ham's ins <laughs> ins and outs for last season so yeah it, it doesn't actually seem like the that rice money was actually used like the about 100 and, uh sorry about 180 million uh with, with players were sold with rice and yep. Skamaka and vlasic and all that kind of stuff and then it kind of mar- marries up with what was spent uh so you'd assume that like it's not necessarily just sat in the pot there but like you'd assume that yeah. that, that money from that big that big out outlay will be there to kind of reinvest this summer like you say, obviously it'd be nice to have an extra 80 million on top of that, but um, hopefully it means that you'll be able to kind of bring in the players you need to, like to replace Paqueta, um, regardless of whichever way it goes, um, and maybe sign a striker who knows that hit the back of the net. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be good. And just someone who's not a moron when it comes to when it comes to spot fixing. That'd be yeah. good. So, <laughs> maybe you're defender with two names yeah. this time. Yeah, no, God, not, <laughs> let's let's not go too crazy. Let's not, let's not... <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, yeah, just a. Just another week in the world of West Ham. What can I say? But yeah. you know, so, I mean, it's always it's always uh, entertaining, if nothing else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's never boring. But I think this this is something that's going to rumble on for months and maybe even years. Even if he is found guilty, he'll appeal it. He'll go to Cass, and 
you yeah. know, and I, w- I wonder whether that'd be a case of like if he does get charged and he does appeal it through cast, like would he be available to play then, like for the the the, the period where he's he's challenging it, or would it? I don't know if he would because because Pogba's banned at the moment, right? And I think he's appealing it, but Pogba's not available. Pogba's banned got like a four year ban, didn't he, for like doping? I think yeah. it was. I think he's appealing it, but he's not available to play currently. So I imagine it'll be a case of. Yeah, if you're banned, you're banned, and it's up to you to sort of peel it and fight it and stuff. So yeah, see what you can get get out of it. Well, it sucks yeah. for him, but if he's done it, then you know it's, it's, it's his own fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I struggle for sympathy. Do you know what I mean? If he if he actually has done it, um, I do, I do. Just to bookend it, I do hope that I doubt they will. But I think just for clarity, in terms of West Ham fans, it'd be nice to get if if he is found guilty, if the FA release what evidence they like, hard evidence they've got. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. sort of say these are the reasons why we believe he, he had knowledge of it. Here's like text messages or whatever. Or here's like a, do- a, a document of him at least showing that they've got evidence that he knew the people that were putting the bets on. So at least West Ham fans can go, okay, he did it then rather than, because you know what will happen if that doesn't happen, all these conspiracy rumors will come out of like, oh, the FA are just trying to stop West Ham from climbing the table or whatever. When it's like, so I think just for their sake and just to stop these bullshit conspiracy theories that always pop up, it'd be good for them to actually release what evidence they have got just so, we know what what the situation is, but yeah, I, mean, I doubt they will. That's the thing, isn't it? Like you, you'd 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 hope at least that there's more evidence than just he's got some yellow cards and when some guys put some bets on. Like, is there's, there's yeah. got to be more? There's got to be more evidence to it to ch- to charge that. him. Yeah, there has. There, you'd think there would be, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Well, well, um, we'll, we'll have a brief touch on on the the, the topic. Like, so uh, we've obviously had the England squad announced. We've got the Euros coming. Up. We will be doing a bit more of a deep dive and a, and a predictions. I I assume in the in the coming weeks. Um, but the England squad's been announced, and I think for the most part, I think it's pretty good. Um, there's a few players that have missed out that have deservedly missed out. I think everyone expected Jordan Henderson to be in there, I think, and he's not there. Um, which is yep. ironically because, like, the one of the play- positions that we could really use some more players in is midfield, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he's not made it. I think there's a few players who, you know, I think are, are a bit lucky to get in there. There's a few players who I think are a bit unlucky to miss out, but but all in all, I don't think there's many. There's many big uh, omissions that I can I can think of. Obviously, Marcus Rashford is the big the big name yeah. uh, omission from there. But if you look at like how he's played over the course of the season, um, like you can you can understand it. The argument would be, well, why is Jack Grealish in there as well? He's had a he's had a less productive season. Um, granted, he's had some injuries, but he's had a less productive season. Yeah. Man City's barely like, and, and Pep's not picking him. So you could argue that he could have gone in over there. I think what he brings to the table in terms of his 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 pros, like obviously he's lightning quick. He's he's there's no there's not many people who are better at shooting pissed off than him. Like the amount of times I'm just sitting and go have it, and he just goes in the top yeah. corner. It's like, All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously, so he misses out. But it's it's I think you know with the players that are available, like we've, we've been saying for ages, like the the front players, the forward players, whether it be wingers or tens or strikers, yeah. And, I can't remember an England squad or that have had this much quality available. Like it is probably going back to the nineties, right? Like yeah. when you had like when you had like Cole, Sheringham, Wright, Shearer. Yeah. Like, well, well, Cole, and, Robbie Cole Fowler, and, like... uh, and Wright never really got in the te- in the squads either, did they? Like, yeah, that that shows the the, the quality of, that was available to. Yeah. Them. Um, but yeah, like y- y- yourself, is there any kind of like glaring glaring misses for you? I think that the my concern is left left back. Obviously, like Luke yeah. Shaw's not played since February. He's more in the in hope that he's going to be okay uh, rather than expectation. Yeah. I think, and I think because of that, to not go with other recognised left backs um, is a bit of a concern because it looks like it's going to be a case like we're going to be playing. Either Joe Gomez, who was Liverpool's third choice left back in the se- in the season, yeah. or we're going to be playing Kieran Trippier out of position, who's again missed a load of the season through injury. Like, yeah. th- there's not a lot of options there. Whether whether there's going to be a system tweak or something, but um, that'd be my concern. I feel I feel a little bit bad for um, what's the lad at uh, Palace called um, Tyreek Mitchell. Yeah, Tyreek Mitchell. Like, I he's, think he's had a he's really good. Se- me. Yeah, yeah, he's had a really good season. Um, he's kind of stepped up, uh, especially when. Palace have been playing a load better in the second half of the season. He's been play- like he obviously been playing more of a wing back uh, since the manager changed, but he spent most of his career playing left back. I think even just for a punt, like the, yeah, the, it, they should have included him there. But other than that, like there's there's not a lot of, of changes I can I can make or that would would suggest. And for uh, for the Gareth Southgate squad, that's that's pretty new to me like i usually go what are these guys doing in there like, <laughs> yeah no I, I think he's i think he's made some really 
really brave calls, I think. And I, I, like, I, I know leaving Henderson and uh, Rashford out, some argue, some would argue it's not a brave shout. But I actually think in terms of like this late on from a t- this sort of close to a tournament to leave out two, in, in terms of that England squads, senior experienced players to just not call them up at all. Um, I think it's actually a really brave call because it's 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 one of his it's been one of his biggest criticisms, which I've sort of partly agreed, partly disagreed with in terms of like calling up his favourites and stuff. But to yeah, to not take John Henderson, who is an experienced character within that gesture, and a popular character in that gesture, and to not take him, and to not take Rashford as well, I think are a big calls. So yeah, fair play to him. I think he's I think he's names, and he's taken punts on players, and not everyone thought he would have done. Like say, I think Adam Walton, a lot of people were saying he should, he deserves a chance. I don't think anyone really thought he was going to. To the fact he's been given a, sh- a, sh- a shot. Jarrell Kwanzaa, don't expect him to make the final squad, but to be in that provisional squad just to train with the guys and get a, a vital feel for the place, you think he's going to be in future squads. And rightfully so. Like, the, the, yeah, the lad's he's been, been great. brilliant this season. Like, yeah, he's yeah. been playing next to Van Dyke, but like he's still but been he, a very good defender himself. A- absolutely. Um, but yeah, so the, the only one big admission for me is Tyra Mitchell. I don't. It's weirder because he's been called up to, that pre- to previous squads. Mm. So whether Southgate has seen something in training that he's just not clicking with and maybe that's the reason i was surprised he wasn't asked about it but even then even if your intention is to start trippier if Tri- trippy has not been in the great in great form either since he's come back from injury probably just being rushed back a little bit but to speak to most newcastle fans he's not had a good time of it this season um so i think to even if that was your initial plan to not have a specialist left back in reserve just in case because i'm going even southgate said himself it's incredibly unlikely Luke Shaw's actually going to make it. Like you say, he's just been called up in the hope that he is able to prove his fitness. Um, but, and, you know, it's, and, and the only other option was Ben Chilwell, who, based off the last two friendlies, you couldn't have taken Ben Chilwell. He was terrible. Yeah. So I don't think Mitchell would have been. He picked up an injury as well recently, hasn't he? Like he's not even playing. Yeah, Chelsea, so there you so. go. So there you go. So I, I think it would have been. I think it would have been very low risk to not take a. A Lewis Dunk, for example, and take a Tyre Mitchell instead. I'd rather see Kwanzaa because I, I imagine Dunk's going to be in the final squad, which as a backup centre back, I'm like fine, whatever. But like, I'd rather him not be there and have Tyre Mitchell there just in case we do have an issue at left back. That's the only real, real complaint I've got with it. Everywhere else, I know people are going to make the argument for Tony and Slanky and like, why is Tony in there and not Slanky? But I just think it's a case of you got. <sighs> It's a difficult one because I think it uh, it ultimately doesn't really matter. I don't think because Kane is going to play every single game unless we win the first two group games and we're already through. He might rest him for the third group game, but like I think Tony's just a bit better suited for his system. Maybe he feels like he deserves this chance after being missing out in the last tournament due to all the you know the betting stuff. And I you can't not well, take Ollie Watkins. So. Yeah, I, I think as well with with that Solanke thing is is with Tony and, and Watkins if they both go, I assume they will. Like you know, to, to have his other options. Yeah. Um. They both do parts of what Solanke does well, but better. So like Solanke, he's he's good at like running in, running the channels and getting in space and finishing. I think Ollie Watkins is better at him than that. He's a decent hold up player. He drops deep and links play. I think Ivan Tony's better at him than that. Uh. So like you think you get you get in the individual parts of what he does well, but to a higher yeah. standard with both of them. Um. Obviously not in the same player, but like I think you 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 know different um different tools for different jobs isn't it like you might need a a drop off physical player like Ivan Tony or you might need someone who's going to stretch him in behind a bit more like Ollie Watkins uh, especially yeah. with you know with with Rashford not being there i think Ollie Watkins is one of those guys that could maybe play like as a as a second striker maybe a wide striker running the channels like yeah. cuz he is a quick guy like and he's a good finisher as well on his right foot so he could offer something similar um the, the the squad is missing a little bit like outside of anthony gordon i don't think there's yeah. a lot of pace up top which which might be a bit of a concern but you know it's not like southgate's been famously knocking the ball into the channels and letting people run onto it is it is a he's kind of yeah. like a, is sit back and, and very, slowly progress it up the pitch kind of guy yeah absolutely and i think maybe that's part of the reason why grealish is is in there because he he will allow I just, I just don't see how i just don't see where he plays like i because you got to imagine you, you'd imagine he's playing Foden out on the left um, and if not him, it's probably going to be Anthony Gordon. Like, I think with Grealish, because I think it's, it's basically, it feels like it's going to be between him and Eze in terms of who goes. I think one of them will miss out. Maybe with Grealish, it's just a case of, it is just trying to strike that balance of players who are used to being in a tournament setting and new players. Yeah. And maybe it feels like having Grealish there is just one extra senior player that can help sort of bed the newer guys in. If like an Adam Wharton goes or 
you know, a, 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 a Cole Palmer, for example. And you've got to think of like... the party when we win it as well. Like, he's going to be great yeah. at the party. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, exactly. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think, like I said, I, th- I, th- I know, and I, I saw it on a day, people will find many reasons to complain about it. And a lot of it is down to my t- my club's player hasn't been called up. So it's a disgrace sort of thing. But, like, I, I on the Rashford thing, I've always said, I don't think form necessarily matters for most positions on the pitch, but for attacking players, it does. I think you need goal scorers with good form going into it, especially going into a tournament. Yeah. It's, it's more beneficial than taking someone who's out of form. I think you can get so I think you can get away with taking an out like an out of form or a non playing Harry Maguire. You can get away with it because he can sort of just slot into that position within the system that is kind of tailor made for him and he'll 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 do well. Whereas if you take a Marcus Rashford who's misfiring and you 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 let's say you're forced to rely on him for a gate a knockout important knockout game and he just hasn't got the confidence to run a goal, you'd, you'd, you'd feel a lot more confident with an Ollie Watkins or an Ivan Tony or a Cole Palmer or a Jared Bowen or the many other attacking players who have just performed better in front of goal than he has this season. So I think I, I do make him right on not taking him. I was shocked, though. I was really, really surprised. I don't yeah, think maybe he was I kind of, I, I thought he might not make the final 26, but I kind of, the provisional squad I thought he'd be in. Like, to may, maybe just like to give him these friendlies. It's the same, maybe it's the same with Luke Shaw. Maybe he's going to play 60 minutes in both of these friendlies and, like, They'll have a look at him and see see whether he can kind of keep it up. But because mm. like you know, if 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 he's fit, he can be a difference maker. Like he he is he is when when he's fit, one of the best left backs in Europe. Issue is, he's just decreasingly fit. Like he just he seems to yeah. play fewer and fewer games every year. Um, but that's another Man United rant. I'll go on. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting for England this tournament. I think our group is, and again, we'll go in, in a bit more depth. But I think our group we should be able to get through the group relatively comfortably, and then it's just how we manage. It's just how we manage the knockouts. And I think he's got an opportunity with that group to manage the squad, for, like rotate a little bit throughout that squad without making like wholesale changes. He can drop a Minu in for a certain, for a game. He can try midfield three in one game, like uh, in one of the games. You can try that midfield three of Rice, Bellingham, and, and Foden, and see how it goes. Because I think in certain games we'll need that. Not every game. If we come against France, I think he will need a slightly better balance. But yeah, it's going to be an interesting one for England. I still, I still wouldn't make us out and out favourites. I still think that belong, that title belongs to France. But we're definitely up there. I think in terms of potential winners. Yeah, it's just the defence that that concerns me. Yeah. Um, when when the the best defenders are uh, Kyle, Kyle Walker and John Stones, who I mean, Kyle Walker has been great this year. John Stones has, has missed a lot of football. Um, yeah, on his day, he's very good, but he's missed a lot of football this year. And then you've got, you know, players who kind of... I know Harry Maguire's been good for England, but it depends how they're going to play. Like, I've seen Southgate saying he, he's open to playing a more a more advanced midfield, a more attacking midfield, because of the way that Kobe Mainu came in against Brazil and kind of played higher up the pitch and pushed the ball forward. Like, lose a little bit of that stability. Is that just gonna leave players like Harry Maguire like a bit out out in the sea? Because yeah, you know, as as solid as he was for United when he came in, as good as he has been for England in in past tournaments, I still think in the last few England games he's looked shaky. He's obviously like I see a lot of him at Man United where I see a lot of his glaring errors. So like having that double pivot in front of him does really help him. Like because yeah. he can kind of just like sit back and let other people do the the work in front of the box, and he just knocks it out whenever it gets crossed in. Like that's that's the, the yeah. thing he's elite at, uh, <laughs> getting his massive head on stuff. Then I think it, I think it depends on who you're playing. I think I think there's certain games you can definitely he can definitely be a lot more adventurous, and I think he will be. Judging by the way he's picked the squad, it, it feels like he will be. Um, but again, it's when he gets some knockouts, and I say if you'll come against some of the big the big sides, you say he's probably more likely to revert, be a little bit more pragmatic, which I, I don't think is the worst thing. Um, but what, one thing I had just thought of, though, it's interesting looking at it because because I think someone made the point. It feels like a sort of changing the guard almost in terms of the playing squad, and it almost feels like we're sort of ushering a, a, a new crop of players for this England team. I do wonder if that means Southgate is maybe thinking of staying it because obviously the big rumor is that he's off into the tournament, whatever happens. But I do wonder if it's a case of maybe he's sticking around for another tournament after this. Maybe I mean, if he gets to a, another final or, or wins it, then I think there'll, there'll be a clamor to keep him in. Because yeah. I mean, I think like you said in your stream the other day, like I don't, I don't think replacing him is as easy a job as it's not as, as people make out. Like I've I've been a big critic of his, and I do think he, he's made big mistakes, and I don't think he's like yeah. a, a tactically aware manager. But then again, who is in international football? Like yeah. international football, let's be honest, just isn't that good. Like it's not it's not I, the it's not the pinnacle of football like people make out because people don't get to train with each other all the time. It's an ever changing no. squad. Like managers get a week or two to train in 
like imprint tactical ideas and like you never know who's going to be fit who's not like it's it's just it's never that it's never that elite level of football that kind of it it was kind of it's always made out to be i think like you know li league and and continental football is is a way higher level than international football yeah. Someone, someone, someone made this point to me before, like at work. I think it was. They were saying about Southgate and saying, "Oh, he's, he's just not like an elite manager." And I just said, "Name me another international manager who is though." And he couldn't. It's like the elite managers don't manage national teams. They just like you just get most of the time they get someone in who is either been around the setup before, and who can get a, you know who can just sort of get a tune out of the players and sort of get a quick system in place, or they take punts like on people do you know what i mean it's it's you, you don't you don't like i wouldn't call didier deschamps a elite level manager like i don't like look at the best example look at phil scolari he won the world cup brazil then went to chelsea and was sacked within four months yeah like it doesn't it doesn't necessarily always equate to if you win a national tournament you're an amazing manager it's just a lot of the time it's down to luck and it's down to momentum and if that's that's what england have kind of relied on in the past couple of tournaments because that's what they have to do well, so international managers like you say is is usually people who haven't achieved massively domestically i think the, like one of the ones who, who kind of books that would be mancini i think he's done really good stuff domestically but um like generally speaking like international managers are play are, are managers that can't get the kind of jobs that they want <laughs> domestically yeah. i mean the fact that um what's his name martinez is still keeps falling upwards in international <laughs> management is is the, the biggest shock to me because the guy's just tactically clue he's, he's a great font of football knowledge i think he'd be yeah. a fantastic director of football but i don't think he's a very good manager uh he's wasted an entire uh, wonder generation of belgian players uh, and, he'll, and he'll do the same with portugal yeah, <laughs> he's got a very good squad of players i hope he gets the france job <laughs> yeah oh, fingers crossed that's what we want that's what we want Right, well, uh, as, as I mentioned, we'll have a bit more of a deep dive into the, the Euros, like, obviously, obviously had a look at the England squad, but we can have a look at some of the other squads, like the the, the big players, like who's in, who's out, like uh, the other nations and stuff as well. And we'll also have a bit of an idea of how we're going to play without a left back with the friendly, uh, all the friendlies that are happening next week as well. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll jump into that before the, the Euros kicks off fully. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll I, I think what I'll do as well is rather than ask, rather than uh, the usual hot take question, we'll get well, we'll do hot takes, but we'll, be, we'll get people's thoughts and predictions and takes ahead of the Euros and see where people are at in terms of who they think are going to be dark horses, who they think is going to win it, how bad they think England are going to do, so, yeah. <laughs> like, all, <laughs> who's going to have a breakout the tournament, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, all the usual. Who the dark horses? Someone will say Turkey, and I'll laugh, and then we'll, <laughs> we'll go from there. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see who the uh, the big transfer is coming out of the Euros, because there's always like it's the same with the World Cup. There's always like yeah. one player you've never heard of before as a great international tournament gets signed off the back of it, and he's absolute dog. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it would be someone from like Dem, it would be like a da Danish player or something. Oh like yeah, Denmark will do all right. It'll be someone I, from Denmark. I bet, I bet Hoyland will like score five goals, and everyone will go, "Oh no, he's he's woken up now. Like he's the best player yeah. in the world now." <laughs> Holland who? <laughs> yeah, <thanks. laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll roll it out. Yeah, we'll get into that next week. But as always, guys, thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us talk. A little bit of football sense, I'd like to think. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next week with, I'm sure, a whole other raft of uh, manager changes and uh, uh, transfer nonsense. Who else is going to get banned for betting? It's uh, It seems to be the in-football <laughs> trend at the minute, doesn't it? <laughs> I'm sure someone else will come out of the woodwork. Um, yeah. I won't put any money on it, though. Way. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> put it down, Ivan. Just leave, yeah. leave it alone. <laughs> uh, as always, guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, please do rate, uh, thumbs up, five star, whatever you do on your uh, podcast platform or viewing platform of choice and uh, yeah we'll see you next time take it easy shout out to Bacatter Island <laughs> <laughs> oh god Bacatter Island <laughs> <laughs>